Well, you can uh, you can you can make these Christians when they're smiling at you turn you can turn their smile into a frown because you just got to point out the information, you know, point out the truth that we have, you know. Um, verse 11, leave thy fatherless children, I will preserve them alive and let thy widows trust in me. For thus saith Yahweh, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. All right, that's talking about the Israelites because we weren't supposed to, you know, drink from this cup of wrath being uh, oppressed by the base people, Edomites, you know. But we, we are, because if you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, it tells you the blessings first, and then it goes into the curses. But we didn't hearken to the word. We turned our, our backs against Yahweh, and therefore we had to drink of that cup. You know, because if you read the blessings, hey, that would have never happened had we kept it, you know, kept it 100, as they say in the world. Kept it real with Yahweh. But you know, we're a stiff-necked, stubborn people, the Bible says. Uh, so we had to drink from that cup. And we had to get whooped by Yahweh's whipping stick, which he used those so-called white people, Edomites, as our whipping stick. And we still getting whipped by them. You know, <clears throat> verse 13, for I have, or let me see, I didn't read that whole thing, the middle of 12, and thou, and art thou he that sh shall altogether go unpunished, thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. It's because these so-called white people are going to be slaves in the kingdom, all right? And they're going to get their ass whooped by Shai when he comes back, all right? Let's just prove that real quick. This is Yahweh Shai talking. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. Alright? So don't listen to these Christians telling you that Yahweh Shai is this nice, frail white man who, who loves everybody. <laughs> He's he's gonna come back with a sword, man. He's gonna fuck these these uh, so-called white people up. He's gonna fuck the Edomites up, man. He's gonna fuck up the two thirds, the, the the Israelites who follow the Edomite and don't want to leave his customs and his traditions and his philosophies. You know, got a lot of people in my own family that are they can't leave that shit, man. They don't want to throw away Jesus Christ. That's too hard for them. You know, uh, Jeremiah 25, and we're going to go back to, actually, you know what, 49, Jeremiah 49. Thirteen, for I have sworn, sworn by myself, said Yahweh, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach. Basra is a chief city of Edom, all right? I don't know if it was the capital or not, but it was a it was one of his main cities, the Edomites. And it's gonna become a desolation and a reproach. A reproach means shame. A waste and a curse. And all the cities thereof shall be perpetual wastes. Meaning perpetual means ongoing, continually. You know. Verse 14 I have heard a rumor from the Lord, and the, an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather ye together and come against her and rise up to battle. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen and despised among men. And this is already manifesting, you know, even, even Edom hates Edom. <laughs> you know, you have Russia hating America, you have, you have uh, Germany hating America, you even have uh, Great Britain. You know, they did the Brexit this year, or actually end of last year, where they left, uh, you know, they're no longer going to be part of the uh, EU, you know. Uh, verse 16, Thy terribleness had deceived thee, and the pride of thine heart, O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, that holdest the height of the hill, though thou shouldest make thy nest high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith Yahweh. All right, and who who dwells 
in the clefts of the rock dealing with uh, when they were in Petra which is modern day Jordan which would be Mount Sire all right which Mount Sire is uh, where Esau dwelt all right I'll show you Genesis 36 and 8 Thus dwell Esau in Mount Sire. Esau is Edom. All right. And this is how he's getting exposed, man. Now we have, because look at the brothers out here doing this truth, studying and being diligent in this truth. We got laptops right next to our Bibles. You know, we got tablets. We got cell phones. <laughs> we can look all this up and basically just pick you apart, man. You know, that's what we're doing. Remember I read earlier, it said he's going to be, uh, what does it say? Oh, yeah, verse 10. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. Why? Because brothers have laptops, tablets, cell phones, computers. Man, we can go into the history on things and prophesy, meaning teach this word and expose Esau for who he truly is, you know? And you, you know, you two-thirds, you ain't gonna believe us, not until Esau starts fucking with you when he's going to, now that he's bringing in his martial law, you know? Now you're gonna believe us, you know? But hey, we're not gonna be able, we're not gonna be accessible, you know, because we're not gonna be able to be on the streets teaching. You know, when you really need it, when this shit really hits the fan, you're going to be uh, left to to basically die, man. Jeremiah 49, 17. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at the plagues thereof. Because yeah, when they look at America after the destruction, after the plagues and the missiles, because the missiles are modern day plagues, uh, the, the microchip, which is coming out, more than likely it's coming out this year, you know, Vaccines, those are all plagues. Esau's gonna put all the shit, make it mandatory, and it's gonna be a plague to all you, you people who don't believe this truth. All right? And people are gonna be astonished, they'll be like, damn, this is the this is America the Great. This is the making America great again. That's why they're gonna be astonished. 18. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. Because America is going to get destroyed, man. He's comparing the destruction of America. What well, says Edom and Esau and Basra? Because those are all spiritual, um, you know, uh, words that describe America. But the, your, your average Christian ain't going to be able to tell you this. Because he can't tell you that Basra was, you know, a chief city in Edom. He can't tell you Mount Sire was a chief, uh, you know, was a, where they dwelt. He can't tell you that Edom is the so-called white man. I mean, they don't have all these um, this knowledge because Yahweh is not dealing with them. He's dealing with his men of Israel, who are the prophets today, teaching this truth. We're able to basically decode this truth. Uh, you know, underneath our elders. All right, verse 19. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. And if you look up uh, Petra, where Esau, Edom dwelt, you know, that's where they had their structures. That is modern day Jordan. All right. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh that he hath taken against Edom and his purposes, and he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Timon. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall, at the cry of the noise thereof, was heard in the Red Sea. And it's because the earth is going to be moved and the noise of their fall is because it's those missiles, man. Those missiles are going to cause 
the earth to move and they're gonna be noise it's gonna be a loud noise when those missiles hit behold he shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra and at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs <laughs> so he's gonna make these uh, these uh, mighty men which are which would be the armies and the military men you know of Edom they're gonna be like women man he's gonna make them like bitches is basically what this book is saying Yahweh is telling you Edomites he's gonna make your army and your military like some bitches verse 22 we just read it <laughs> he's gonna make you a little bitch and uh, that's that's your uh, that's your fate Esau Edom you know Ezekiel 25 and 13. <clears throat> Therefore, thus said Yahweh, the power, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate from Timan, and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword, meaning the missiles. All right, 14. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, vengeance saith Yahweh thy power. All right. So now I'm going to go to Isaiah 11, 14. And it says, But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And if you, you read the whole book, chapter 11, it's talking about Ephraim and Judah. Ephraim is uh, northern kingdom. Judah is southern kingdom, Israel. All right. Ephraim is the head tribe of, of northern kingdom. Judah is the head tribe of southern kingdom. So that's why it just says Ephraim and Judah. But it says that's who the they is. is going to spoil them in the east together. That That's who that's talking about is the Israelites. They're going to be the ones that lay their hand upon Edom, which is the so-called white man. Moab, which is the uh, so-called Chinese. And the children of Ammon are the Japanese, so-called Japanese. They're going to obey us, it says. Because the heathen is going to be our inheritance, man. Let me, let me get it. Isaiah, I think, I mean, Psalms 2 and I think 9 or 10. No, 8. Psalms 2 and 8. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. When his wrath kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So we're putting our trust in Yahweh. And that's why we know we're going to inherit the heathen for our possession. You know, it says that in verse 8. We're going to break them with a rod of iron, all right? We're going to dash them in pieces like a potter's vessels. And this is just balance, man. Because they've done this to our people, you know, over and over in captivity after captivity. Moab, uh, Ammon, you all, you all ain't going to um, escape this judgment. You, you have judgment to face too, you so-called Chinese and Japanese all right, you know, all the heathen nations. But you two thirds, you know what? You you're gonna be. You may as well be a heathen. You may as well have been born a heathen, because you don't leave those false philosophies. You know. So that that's you know the prophecy on these heathen nations, and it always starts out with Edom. Edom, you're gonna pay for. You're gonna actually. You're gonna, you have the biggest price to pay for all the wickedness that you've done on the earth. All right? But with that, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahushai, Bahasham, Raka, Kodash. I want to give double honors 
to all the uh, to to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, and also want to acknowledge all the Akyon who are pushing this truth, even though we're in lockdown in Babylon. Shalom to the elect. May you endure to the end.